This watch is one of only 200 of its kind from a small, independent brand that produces relatively few watches every year. This is the Parmigiani Fleurier Tone de Graph GT. This is my first experience with any Parmigiani watch. I've seen them in a store or two, but as someone who has neither the style nor the budget for a high horology dress watch, I never paid much attention. But it wasn't because any lack of respect. A quick glance at any Parmigiani watch tells you quite a lot about the brand. Parmigiani watches are elegant, meticulously crafted, and have their own distinct design language. It's a language that is both present and evolving with this Tondograph GT. Parmigiani Fleurier was founded in 1996 by Michel Parmigiani after his decades of experience and training in traditional Swiss watchmaking. The brand quickly began winning accolades and awards like Watch of the Year Award for the Bugatti Type 370, a watch that seems to have inspired other indie brands to push boundaries in similar ways. The Tondograph GT was just announced this summer of 2020 along with a few other Tonda GT watches, and certainly the Tondograph GT is the flagship of that collection. The Tondograph GT's bracelet and case are made of stainless steel, one of the rarer metals in the Parmigiani catalog. The case is 42 millimeters in diameter, 13.7 millimeters thick, and 47 millimeters long. It's water resistant to 100 meters and has a price tag of 19,500 US dollars. For $1,000 less, the Tondograph GT can be had on a black rubber strap. The watch sits nicely on my 7 inch wrist. The combination of a complicated movement and a broad steel bracelet give the Tonograph some heft, but thanks to its lower center of gravity and wide stance, it's very pleasant to wear. What really sets this watch apart from others in the Tonda line and other steel luxury watches is the set of complications. The Tonograph GT is an annual calendar chronograph watch. Annual calendars are relatively rare themselves. Despite hundreds of years of Swiss watchmaking, the first annual calendar wristwatch wasn't produced until 1996 with the Patek Philippe 5035. Annual calendars like those from Parmigiani only need to be set once a year at the end of February, that's assuming you keep them wound. And on top of the annual calendar complication is the chronograph complication. The list of annual calendar chronograph watches is impressively short. There's only about six brands that have ever made such watches, and that list includes Patek Philippe, Richard Mille, and now Parmigiani Fleurier. Unlike annual calendars from Patek Philippe, the Tondograph only displays the date and month and does away with the day of the week, which I think is a good choice. The date and month are both orange to help the wearer make the connection that these two complications are paired together and separate from the chronograph. The date style is what's often referred to as a big date, where each of the two numerals sits on a separate disc. It's a treatment I've always liked. To make room for the month display at the 3 o'clock register, the running seconds hand is read on two concentric arcs. When the longer end of the seconds hand reaches the track, you read the upper track. And when the shorter end of the hand reaches the lower track, you read that. The chronograph complication is read with a center seconds hand, a minute counter at 9 o'clock, and an hour counter at 6 o'clock. The black dial is full of depth and texture. From the outside in, there's the raised chapter ring, then a radial ring where the markers are inset, and then the main guilloche dial. The dial texture with the big date immediately remind me of the second generation Vacheron Constantin overseas chronograph, which I used to have. Maybe that's no coincidence. This Parmigiani watch was designed in partnership with Dino Modolo, one of the designers of the original Overseas. And it is tempting to compare the Tonograph GT to other luxury steel watches with integrated bracelets. I've had several Royal Oaks, a Nautilus, and two Overseas. 
But despite the design collaboration, I think this Tondograph is nothing like those watches, and I don't really see an overt attempt to mimic them. And that's smart, because this Tondograph GT isn't for people who want those watches. I think it's a watch for people who want to lead and not follow. I think it's for people who have their own taste, and who have the confidence and knowledge to spend 20k on a watch that isn't a trending hashtag. The differentiator for me is clearly the design of the Tonograph GT. It's very Parmigiani and very un Genta. There are so many fine details on this case and bracelet that I feel like apologizing to the watchmakers for my inability to cover it all in this video. Maybe my favorite detail of the case and bracelet isn't so much about the finishing, but the design itself. I love how the chronograph pushers mirror the shape of the lugs on which they sit. This kind of thing just delights me. The back of the case is open to give a view of the PF43 movement. And I'm glad because it'd be a shame to hide a movement that looked this good with its finishing and 22 karat rose gold rotor and a glimpse of just a few of its 433 parts. When I first unboxed the Tondograph GT, I, I didn't like it. Despite knowing the expertise and thought that went into it, I initially was put off by the design. That feeling lasted all of 30 minutes. It didn't take long for me to find myself staring admiringly at my wrist. And still, the more time I spend with the Tondograph GT, the more I like it. Would I buy it? Probably not, it's not really for me. Would I recommend it? Oh yeah, I would. Would I be impressed and awed if I saw someone wearing this? Hell yes. If you know yourself, your style, and horology enough to buy this watch, you've earned my respect. And so has Parmigiani Fleurier.